Oh man, Instagram, how you've changed. Started all off with thousands of people posting the face of a duck, all the way up until you were purchased by the face of a Zuck. And as Instagram has changed, so too has the bar for the quality of content that's expected from creators. Whether you're posting for the sake of a brand or just to flex on them a little bit, you're gonna have a lot better of a time if you understand all five of the points I'm gonna drop after this intro. Is going on everybody my name is Kenneth Wayne and these are my five tips for maximizing your image quality on Instagram tip number one is to shoot vertical now I may get some flack for saying this Kenneth, our cameras are built for both portraits and landscapes how dare you try to restrict my artistic vision whoa 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 I'm not trying to restrict your artistic vision Instagram is I'm kidding, they allow a plethora of dimensions to be posted on the site. I say to shoot vertical if you're shooting for Instagram for two reasons. Reason number one, the largest post resolution Instagram allows is 1080 by 1350, which is a four by five. It's at this size you get that long and tall post that a lot of people are looking for, as opposed to one of the more puny ones. This way it'll take people longer to scroll past your post because it physically takes up more space on their screen. The longer your post is on their screen, the more likely they are to like it, yada, yada, yada. You know that part. But Kenneth, I can still shoot a landscape. I just have to crop it to a four by five before I post it. And yeah, that's true. But you'll be losing a lot of information in the edit and you're gonna have to recenter the subject. This is why I say to just shoot portrait from the get go. You're taking the photo with four by five in mind. So that way everything you actually want in the photo will make it to Instagram and you'll save yourself time in the edits. And if you still want a landscape, you can just take one after. And if you still want to post a landscape with the most screen real estate, you just have to do that thing where people take it, divide it in half, and then upload it as two photos next to each other. And they scroll seamlessly. Who told you you couldn't have it both ways? Work smarter, not harder. So casually keep diving into concrete. So bittersweet. All right, tip number two. Do not, come closer, do not max out any sliders. People who max out their sharpening and or structure sliders in hope of making their photos seem higher quality, I'm looking at you. This is just a basic misunderstanding of what these structure and sharpening tools are for. And to drive this one home, I need you to know how sharpening works. The software looks for areas of contrast in the photo and then exaggerates those parts. The problem is that the sharpening is applied to the entire photo, not just the parts you want. This means if there's any people in the photo, any facial blemishes they may have will be exaggerated. And the blurry background that a lot of us work so hard to get will be sharpened, which is the opposite of what bokeh is supposed to be. And for a rotten cherry on top, any noise that was in the photo will now be sharpened to front and center. So because we're happy with the detail it brings to the areas we want it, we turn a blind eye to the things that it does to the areas that we don't want it. Well, that's only true for people who don't know the technique I'm gonna show you that only sharpen certain areas. But for that, you're gonna have to stick around for tip number four. Got him, dude! But to wrap up everything in this tip, unless that photo really needs some help, be subtle with your sliders. Think of it like the accelerator in a car. There's times to creep and there's times to give it some gas, but how often are you actually flooring it? Don't answer that! Tip number three, understand dimensions and compression. So for example, when I say 1080 by 1350, I'm talking about a photo that is 1080 pixels wide and 1350 pixels tall. Instagram uses these dimensions to organize all the photos that are uploaded every day. This matters because your image quality can suffer if the dimensions you're uploading are way outside of what they allow. If you upload something bigger than the requirements, Instagram will automatically compress the image so it fits within their standards, and in the same way they will expand anything that's too small. Either one is bad news for image quality. I know this can all be a little confusing, so to help you understand a little bit better, I actually got in touch with Instagram, and they allowed me to get a behind the scenes look at how compression works. Here it is. Hi, welcome to Instagram. How can I help you? I'm just looking to upload this. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is beautiful. Yeah, thanks man. It took me two years to edit that. I went bankrupt over it. I spent so much time on it that my wife ended up leaving me. But it'll all be worth it. When my friends see that photo posted in full glorious qu- what are you doing? Whoa, 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 this is common everyday Instagram compression. We do it to thousands of photos a day. Your photo's gonna be fine. It doesn't look like- <laughs> Sir, please. I'm, what are you gonna do with those? What do I have to do to get you to stop? Please, I'll do anything, just stop. Don't do this. Please. All right, 
Should be viewable on your feed in three, two, now. <laughs> that sounded so wet. You need to wipe yourself. Um, sir, is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah. Yeah. I got something you can help me with. I have one more photo to upload. Can you help me out with that? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Another beauty. Thanks, man. That one took me five years. I even had to sell a few of my internal organs. What are you doing with that? Okay, okay, compression isn't that bad. But that skit was fire, though. I'm gonna need you to... Look. So now you're probably thinking, okay, Kenneth, I get it. Compression, bad. How do I avoid it? The long and short of it is, you can't. If they let anyone with a 4K camera upload whatever photo format, whatever size they wanted, they'd be out of server space before you could say Zuckerberg. So this means that the photo you upload to Instagram and the photo that is shown on Instagram are not the same photo. Rather, the photo is a near identical copy that fits within their parameters. What this also means is that there's no secret sauce, no trickety trick that's gonna make your photo magically uncompressed. That's just not how it works. But what you can do is upload photos that are either within or really close to their parameters. I'll go ahead and take a screenshot of the parameters directly from their website, and I'll also leave a link in the description to it. So no more just shooting, uploading, and hoping for the best. You need to decide if you want a four x five, a one to one, or whatever, and cropped into those dimensions before you upload it. One more thing before I close out this tip. I really wanted to be the guy that would come to you with the solution to nail down Instagram compression. But the truth of the matter is, it's just not that simple. I scoured the internet. I looked through blog posts, articles, Reddit threads. I didn't find any tried and true solution to deal with Instagram compression. However, towards the end of my research, I did come across one comment on Reddit that unexpectedly answered my question and ended my search. It was by a guy who goes by the Instagram handle at each bomb. Come to find out, I actually already follow the guy on Instagram. His photos are amazing. You should check him out. A bunch of people in the thread were sharing export settings and tricks to get around compression. And then he comes in and says, hmm, I usually just export from Lightroom as max res and then upload straight to Instagram like that. Looks fine to me. I usually get a ton of DMs asking how my photos are so sharp and crisp on Instagram. I, as a person who struggles with trying to be so perfect that you never upload anything, thought there was something to be learned from that. And I think a lot of you will learn from it too. So much so that it gets its own tip after this next one. If you've already seen a few of my videos, you saw this coming a mile away. You've got to use a good third-party photo editor. Now this is not to disrespect Instagram. The tools they give you are fine. They're not bad, but they are basic. So what I always recommend is a third-party photo editor that gives you tools above and beyond what Instagram offers. Tools to help your Instagram page stand out that much more from the next account. For example, I use Snapseed for all my aesthetic edits or effects that I'm doing. I use an app called Lens Distortions for light hits and just to make lighting better in my photos. And then I use the Instagram app tools just for like the basic touch-ups at the end before I upload. Now those are just the apps I use, but as you know, there are literally thousands of apps out there. So just take your pick. If you don't mind, it would help me a lot if you would drop a comment that says the apps that you use. And also like a few of the other comments of ones that you agree with. I wanna use that data for another top five I'm throwing together. And I also just wanna upgrade my own arsenal. So show me what you got. Now let's think back to when I was talking about leaving your bokeh and facial blemishes untouched when you're applying sharpening. You might've been thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. Why do I need anything besides the Instagram app for my edits? And I can answer that in one word. Layers. Each of the Instagram tools edits the entire photo. You don't get a choice in specifically where the edits are applied. It's like that with a lot of apps, not just Instagram, but there are a few apps like say Snapseed, and I think even Lightroom does this too, correct me if I'm wrong, but where you can apply edits to only certain parts of the photo through layers. To make good on my promise from earlier, let me show you an example where I edit a photo and only sharpen certain areas using Snapseed. To do that, I'm gonna be editing a photo with a lot of bokeh. It's a close up I took on the ground last fall. And here that is. Before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little b -b 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 bonus tip. It's not that serious, it's just dark mode. <laughs> but Snapseed actually released a dark mode a little while ago. It wasn't like broadcasted all over the app. I think there was just like a pop-up when you updated, but I'll show you it now. Go up to the top right corner and select those three dots in a line and then select settings. And one of your first things is gonna be dark theme. Turn that on, bada bop, whoo, looking clean. You know I'm all about that dark mode. Okay, look right here on the bottom section of the photo. You see those leaves. For those leaves, I really want that crisp, sharp look and feel to them so you can really feel like the crunchiness of dead leaves. But just above that section where I want the sharp and structured edit, I have this smooth and soft bokeh. And let me show you what it looks like when you over sharpen that. 
We'll go into tools in the bottom center, select details in the top center. Now in details, you get two options, structure or sharpening. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna zoom in and show you kind of what happens while people are editing photos and over sharpening. So now I'm zoomed in a little bit and I'm paying attention to right here, the leaves that I want sharpened. But take a look at what happens. So I'm gonna sharpen this up. Look at that right there, right around that part of sharpening looks pretty good and a little bit of structure. Let's go and let's do a before and after, before, after. Look at how I brought out the details in that leaf. But now what happens when I zoom out? There's a lot more noise. If we zoom in here on my bokeh, let's go do a before and after. You see how that goes away and comes back? And let's be honest, a lot of us aren't even being that subtle. If I take this sharpening up to what a lot of people do, right about there, and then do a before and after, before, after. See how noisy and muddy it makes it look? When it's far away, it's harder to tell that that's happening. Even though it's not crazy noticeable that it's over sharpened, why have any sharpening in the bokeh when you don't have to? So here is the solution. This is what you do. Now we're gonna go up to the top with the two boxes and the arrow jumping over them. Select that, then select view edit, second from the bottom. Now click on details, then select that paintbrush and canvas. Now take your details up to 100, zoom in and watch this. I'm painting it in. Now you can't see because it's red, but take a look here. As I do it, you can really see how it's painting in what I've done. I'll only put it on this section, maybe some of the leaves right here too. Let's take a look at them there before after, before, after. You see that difference? It's very subtle, but that's what we're going for. Now to take a look at where exactly you have applied, select that eye icon next to the check mark on the bottom right. You'll see that I painted in pretty much the entire bottom section, but I'll go ahead and finish it off right there. And then select okay and back out. And now the bokeh up top is untouched, still smooth and beautiful. Bottom part looks a lot more crunchy. I don't know why, but that rubs me the wrong way to call a photo crunchy. But before, after. So well, there you have it. Now the layer approach isn't just for structure and sharpening. You can use it for saturation, contrast, all that stuff, but this will just get you on the right path. Okay, last tip. Now flashback to when I was talking about that guy at each bond on Reddit responding to everybody. All the people in the thread were immersed in a conversation about getting around Instagram compression. Meanwhile, this man's just posting, and he's already at a goal that a lot of us wanna reach. That says a lot. And I think a lot of you watching these types of videos, and especially the ones who made it this far in, really care about what you're putting out. And I certainly understand that sentiment. Your posts are like your babies. You want them to go out into the world for people to like them and for them to do well. But if you spend more time stressing over the details than you actually do shooting, then I think you're missing the point. In my opinion, the quickest way to get your content to the highest quality possible is just to get it out there. Show us what you got and get the feedback. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech that rang around the world was not in HD or color. There are street vendors in Singapore that have earned Michelin stars. What you need to work on isn't the production value, but the content itself, the quality of the message. When your kid thinks back to their piano recital, they're not gonna remember that you wore a Rolex. But what they will probably remember, at least what will be important to them, is that you were there. And compared to that, what you are wearing doesn't even matter. I mean, well, hopefully you were wearing something. And just like the recital, what matters for your content is that you just keep showing up. You've gotta be able to tell yourself, I will keep working on my production value as much as I can over time, but that's not gonna stop me from making something today. But that's all I got for you. Those are all five of my tips to help you get better with making your content on Instagram. If you found any of these tips helpful, please let me know by making good use of the like button and please subscribe. I need it, I'm serious. And look at you staying until after the credits. I too enjoy Marvel movies. If you enjoyed the cinematic music I used in this video, everything I used is from a website called epidemicsound.com. It is a dope online music library where you can use a bunch of music for your channel and not get copyright striked. If you wanna try out Epidemic for yourself, check the description, I've got a link for you. And from that link, you'll get 30 days free to use Epidemic Sound. Of course, if you end up signing up, it gives me a small kickback, but it doesn't cost you anything. In fact, it costs less because you get a free month. So please try it out. <laughs> Have a good one.